Yeah. Take time. it this time. We're going to take it home. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. That's one. I didn't even recognize the song. That's one. <laughs> I didn't recognize hey. it. Hey. Oh, 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 hey. Look at oh, it felt good. It felt good. Max Scherzer did what he was supposed to do. Paid $43 million to go deep into games and only give up one run. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. But I got to tell you, it still makes me feel like the Mets are a day-to-day proposition. They they have to play one game at a time. They can't. And I know it's a cliche, but they can't just start thinking about, well, now we figured it out. Now we got guys hitting. Lindor's hitting home runs. Vogelbach's hitting home runs. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. We we fixed ourselves. They have not quite fixed themselves. But I did notice something last yesterday, and it came to head when you, I read this article in the Athletic about Tommy Pham. It was actually this article about a meeting that Buck had right after they brought up Mike Vientos, and it created a crowded situation in the positions. Right, and in this meeting, Buck Showalter sat down with Canna, Escobar, Vogelback, and Tommy Pham. Because they all had to figure out how they were going to get playing time and who was going to play against who. And Buck walks in and he has this sheet of paper. And it's got all of the suggested lineups. Remember the whole we thing? Yes. That we talked about with Buck Showalter? It, mm-hmm. it, he just, this confirms it. Yep. It's not all Buck. It is a analytics department run by Joe Lefkowitz that's throwing out numbers and says, against this guy is XYZ. This guy is blah, blah, blah. This guy is blah, blah, blah. Therefore, you are not going to play in particular, Tommy Pham, against righties because you can't hit righties. They were getting ready to play the cl- the Cubs. And that was a series was, in regular, yeah. He was going to start one time. One time. Okay. And probably not bad a lot unless you got a lefty reliever. And Tommy Pham got pissed about it. Good. And, and he got pissed, and he started grinding, and he basically wanted to tell the Mets analytics department, go blank yourself. And since that point, actually before that, he has started to rake. His OPS is over 1,000. His WRC plus, the weighted runs created, is 174, so 74% better than league average. He had two hits last night. He's a hustle player. You see him grinding around the base. He stretched a double yesterday. He scored two runs. Tommy Pham took the analytics and said, shove it. And and by to me, this is the lesson for this Mets team that, again, is grinding day to day. This isn't an everyday thing. It's not a, they've all of a sudden figured it out. This is a grind day to day situation for this Mets. But the lesson that I take from what I've seen over the last couple of games from individuals, not the team, but the individuals, is analytics sucks. And if Buck Showalter is going to be an effective manager for this Mets team, they got to let him use his knowledge and feel for the game and not just pieces of paper saying this guy should start here, this guy should play left field, this guy should play second, yeah. and this guy should bat seven, Jeff McNeil, throw you all over the lineup, do whatever I feel like, because the analytics says it. Yeah. If Buck Showalter can't be Buck Showalter, even though that's kind of nebulous, but if he can't be this old school field manager, the Mets have no chance. The other example is Daniel Vogelback. Daniel Vogelback sitting down for however long it was, a week, and getting a mental respite, that's not an analytics decision. Nope. That is Buck saying, you know what? I've seen this many times over my many years in baseball. Vogie, go take a chill pill, right? You're not going to play. Right? You're going to just get yourself right. He comes back, he's got two home runs and four RBIs and all these things since he's been back, and he looks like the Daniel Vogelback that Billy Epler brought in here last year to hit and smash home runs, and that you thought was going to be this, this cultural hero for the Mets just because he'd run at the home runs every now yeah, and then. with the Mets fans. This is not analytic-driven. If the Mets are going to piece their way back into this thing, it's yeah. going to happen because Buck's got to feel what's right with his team. See, I'm, I'm torn here because I, I agree with your premise, but the problem is, you know, like, the Mets roster is such that, you know, outside of, I, I know that Fam is carving out some space now and playing well, and he is hustling, and, he is, and he's quitting himself well. But yep. th- I, I, don't, I don't know that, I don't know that you trust him. I mean, you ride him until he chills, no question. No Without question about that. And that's the feel. No question. Yeah, for, yeah, that's the feel. But, I, you know, the Mets just... The Mets don't have enough good players, I think, to to not rely on the numbers to some extent. 
Like, I almost think, like, they've got to mix and match a little bit. And you know me, I'm not a big proponent of the numbers, though, of course, I understand their place in the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, see, last night to me, I started this start of the show singing the, the Mets song mm-hmm. and having a little bit of fun. They, the Mets looked really good last night. There's no doubt about that. But the way they've looked, whether it's being, uh, well, they outscored 26-6 to six early in Milwaukee. Remember that series? Mm-hmm. I know it was a while ago. But they lost that series 26-6. to six. They lost the season series to the Tigers. They lost twice to the Rockies. They got swept by the Jays and barely scored a run. <laughs> Every time they play the Braves, they get absolutely rolled. And by the way... You want to talk about some numbers. The A's are 19. This is why last night, I, again, it, it's a good start. Yeah. But I need 7, 8, 9, 10 days of consistent baseball before I even get remotely excited about the prospects of the Mets flipping their season. The Oakland A's are 19 and 53. 19 and 53, but they somehow managed to win seven straight games. They have a run diff recently. They've got a run differential of minus 203, which is heinous, but they still <laughs> managed to win seven straight. The Kansas City Royals, who very quietly are as bad as the A's, yeah. with the same exact record, 19-53. and 53. A couple of nights ago, they scored 10 or 11 runs. They beat the Angels. Their run differential, minus 110. This is baseball. And even, I'm not saying that the Mets are bad. They're not nearly as good as people thought they'd be. And until proven otherwise, they're not good. Mm-hmm. But I want to be fair. They're not the A's. They're not the Royals. I'm not even remotely implying that. But even the bad teams stumble upon a game where you look good. I promise that the next five or six days without Aaron Judge, the Yankees will hammer out a three spot in the first inning, and they'll roll nine to two. It's coming. Mm-hmm. Because when you play 160, listen, all these guys were stars in high school, studs at JUCO, stud in college, studs in the minors. They are they are not bereft of talent. You know, it's peer-to-peer it varies, of course, and that, that's what distinguishes a great player from a good player. But they are all elite elite baseball players from various backgrounds. So on a given night, they can look amazing. Let's see it again. Yeah, Let's see it again. Well, again, and all ultimately, numbers, Tommy fam, <laughs> analytics, gut. Come on, you know the roster. I, of course I do. But it, when it comes down, to, when it when your roster isn't as good as you want it, or you think it was, because that's really what it's come down to for the Mets this season. It's just not as good as everyone thought it would be. And that's from Billy Epler to the, the last fan. Nobody is not nearly as good as they thought it was going to be. And so when that's the case, you have two choices. You say, all right, the numbers are going to tell me that this guy is going to get out of his slump against this pitcher or this righty or lefty, whatever it may be. Uh, this, 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 uh, This pitcher has a better chance coming out of the bullpen of getting out the next three batters uh, that whoever they're playing, that they're facing, right? That... That's one way to do it. Yep. The other way to do it is to say, Buck, you've been co- you've been managing for decades. You've seen all kinds of iterations of teams. You've seen all kinds of different players. You know exactly what's going to happen in your mind. L- tell us what you think. And if they don't do that and rely on Buck to have his expertise as a manager, not as an analytic, uh, you know, reader of paper, but as a manager. They have no shot because you've seen some of the success when Buck's allowed to make his own lineup as opposed to the lineup that the piece of paper tells you you need to make. That's the only thing I'm saying. Again, yeah, no, I got it, you. They're day to day, BT. It, it, tomorrow, today could be a disaster. Yeah, I know Verlander got his ring yesterday, and he's up there hamming it up with Dusty Baker, and it looks cool. Dusty's got a new wristband. You yeah, see he does, him? He, uh, he just he churches it up every time. <laughs> Dusty, you, Dusty's a ham. I love he's smooth it. As, he's he's smooth forever as young, Dusty. Dusty. Bro, he is smooth as silk, mm-hmm. Dusty Baker. But if 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 Verlander gets rocked. This afternoon. That changes the entire changes, conversation. It, it, exactly. We're back to where we were yesterday. Which is why I'm not overreacting. You give out credit, you dish it out, you react to it, but, you know, you, you've got to see some some consistent play. Last night was fun. Let's see if it's an outlier or if it's the start of something meaningful. 877-337-6666. 66 is our number. It's 1012 on the fan. Good morning, everybody. Tiki and Tierney show. And we're inside. What's up, Hoff? Hoff just strolls in. <laughs> Strolls in mid segment. That's the that's the freedom he's got on this show. <laughs> he can interrupt us. Love you, buddy. Are you pumped about your Mets? Yeah. We got the team. <laughs> uh, we'll get you on the mic in a second. Let me just throw one thing out to you, at least pertaining to numbers here, right? And I, I, again, I'm largely with Tiki in terms of a, 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 a fair combination, eye test, gut. Mm-hmm. You know, reacting to numbers. Let's take. Oh, you're not even going to use names. Pitcher X, batter Y, uh, and you know, pitcher X's. 
repertoire. Let's see, he dabbles. Obviously, he's got a four-seamer. Maybe even messes around with a two-seamer. Let's say he's got a, a sweeper, a <laughs> slider, and maybe a show-me cutter that he throws 1.3% of the time for variance. I'm just throwing stuff out there. This is where numbers are applicable, right? And let's say you let's say Tom, and he's a righty. I, I am gonna actually use a name. Let's say it's Tommy Fam. Tommy okay. Fam, righty pitcher X is a righty, and that's the repertoire that I just ran through. And he throws the slider. This would be a lot, but he throws the slider. 44.7% of the time. So his pitch probability leans strongly in the direction of his best pitch is a slider. Yep. You can obviously extrapolate what, based on the numbers, what Tommy Fan doesn't hit well from righties. All right, because there was a thought he doesn't hit righties. And some of the numbers back that up, obviously. Last year he hit 222 yeah. against righties. This year the righty average is actually better than lefties, in large part because of last night and the last few days. But if Tommy Fan, if the numbers spit out, Tommy Fan does not hit sliders well. And you're facing a righty who throws a nasty slider. Doesn't it kind of make sense to maybe not play Tommy Fan? Well, I mean, what's wrong with unless that? Tommy Fan has the right kind of plate discipline and just spits on that thing when he knows it starts in the zone and it goes out of the but zone. But if he, yeah, I hear right, you. But if he had that kind of plate discipline, the numbers wouldn't okay. say what they say. So I would, I would counter back and say, all right, what's his chase rate? Like, you know what I mean? Like, seriously, that's the, and, if, and if I'm Tommy, and if, I'm, sure, if yeah. I'm Tommy yeah. Fan. And the analytics department is determined by playing time. I'm going to get the analytics and then showing why I can hit righties, right? That, and I don't think it should be a, a battle like that. But you know what? I feel like for this Mets team, it is that. It's become this 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 grind in players' heads and with the manager and the analytics department. It, like, I deserve to play. And when when you're desperate for playing time, you end up pressing when you get playing that time. That is absolutely true. And so that's 100% it, true. there's no ease here. And it's why guys are, they go, but they cold. haven't deserved that ease. Tommy fan does I, I, up until I, the last I, week. I doesn't deserve to get I rolled agree. out there for 79 days in I, a row. Why? I agree. So what's, the, so He's what's 34 year old, you know, transient bounce around, whatever. He's almost done with his career. I, I, Tommy fan. I, I just, hey, come on, man. But you have to give Tommy fam credit. I, I Tommy fan I saw a challenge in front of him. That is the analytics. Yeah. He saw the challenge in front of him and he addressed it head on. And and he's proven that he should play every day, and he has been playing every day. Now it's going to get complicated because all three of their outfielders, or four really, because when you when you count uh, Kana, they're all starting to play really well. And so now you're kind of figuring out. That's a good problem. It's a good problem. Yeah, that's a good. Rather that's than a having everybody playing poorly. That's right. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. We're inside of our Town Fair Tire Studio. Friends of Town Fair remind you that you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody. Beats Town Fair Tires, nobody. Listen, if there's one guy you might want to listen to, it's Tommy Pham. I don't know. I could just I can imagine him knocking ominously on Buck's door <laughs> with those, you know, computer geeks saddled around Buck and with, with uh, not smiling. Uh, 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 he, he don't smile at he's all. He's 225. He's a two, serious two, cat. 230. Yes. Thick. Got that yes. got that scowl on. He does. He looks like he's mad at the world. <laughs> no, he does. And, but he's playing well. But I you're, love that. And you're, yeah, no, and you're right. And this team needs it. Yeah. And listen, any bad team needs it, and they've been playing very poor baseball. So hopefully, this is the start of a little run. I'm not fully buying it. I don't love the roster at all. Matter of fact, I don't even really like the roster. Uh, but you got to give credit where it's due. And the Mets came out and they swung, and hopefully they do it again today and they deal on the mound. And if so, you piece one with two and you get going. Mike is in Massapequa. What's going on, Mike? Hey, how are you guys? Hey, Mike. Mike. Off the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Listen, guys, um, I couldn't agree with, with Brandon Moore. I, I think the, the roster as a diehard Mets fan is is not that good. And forget last night. I mean, this is, was a struggling Astros team that's missing players. They're in a funk right now. And the Mets got a good one. But their record is, is not anywhere near it needs, needs to be. And, and when I see Daniel Vogel back, and I know you guys tug it to my heartstrings. I mean, the guy's a human being. And, I got on him last time, and you know I don't mean it as far as how he is as a person, but yeah. I got to tell you, it's never personal. Every time he comes out and hits a homer, it, it's just the worst thing for the Mets because Buck loves this guy. This guy has no business in the lineup uh, ever. He should never start, never, unless there's a catastrophic number of in injuries. This guy, at best, if Alonzo's best friends with him and they love him and the organization <laughs> loves him, at best, this guy should be a home nut threat off the bench. You know, a la uh, La Grande Orange, Rusty Staub. Yeah, <laughs> right. Hey, give Ru hey, by the way, by no means give Rusty a, a little more respect there. The field that cannot run the bases 
Yeah. That really is the only asset if, if if he hits a home run, which he doesn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ninety nine out of his uh, out of his uh, out of a hundred balls that he hits in the air are warning track power with this guy. He just doesn't hit homers rarely. And if he doesn't don't do that, he clogs up the bases. You want to talk analytics? You put him on the bases. It's a nightmare. I mean, real quick, guys. Yeah, but, gonna, so, but, so, Mike, so. let me boil it down this yeah. way. That's true. Let me boil. Thanks for the call, bud. Go, when, go over the fence. Otherwise, yeah. Eh. <laughs> Here's the analytical probability. If Vogelback is on first base, there's a high probability he will not make it to home. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, that's the advanced deep dive analytics. Now, yeah. I mean, it's not a knockoff. It's just it's just no, the fact it's, of who he is. I still haven't seen him throwing a baseball this year. Honestly, I was joking around with Hoff. I said, "Are we sure he's thrown? Like thrown?" I know he played a little bit of first base here and there, but it's it's crazy. Last year he got a little run of first base a couple times, right? But it wasn't for the Mets. I, I, I no, no, was, I know, I know. But like with the Pirates and Seattle, he played like five was, innings in total. Last oh year. my god! Yeah, yeah. This year Yikes. all DH. This year it's all DH. So I played. So he more. has not thrown a base. Exactly, you've thrown more than he has. No, no, I pl- <laughs> I, I played first base more in the softball game Saturday yes. night than he has his entire yes. career. No. Oh no. Okay. No. Close? I mean, the card made us play a lot of innings. That's why we all got hurt. Maybe close. Now let's get to uh, Eddie and Elizabeth. Ed, what's happening, bud? How are you today? Yes. Hey, what's, up? what's up, guys? How you doing? What up, We're Eddie? All good, dude. All I'm going to say is this. Analytics is ruining baseball. Let Buck show Walter Marriage. He knows what the hell he's doing. Well, let me ask you this, Ed. Um, aside from, like, the Vlad Guerrero thing that we always bring up, Give me a concrete lineup um, issue that you feel Buck has been forced to do this year, hmm. and if he's freed up, he would do differently. Well, I haven't really followed the Mets much this year. I'm a Yankee fan, but my point is this. They're letting all these geeks freaking uh, <laughs> dictate, dictate lineups and all that stuff. I still coach, and I had a father come up to me last week because I, I can keep the analytics of, of of your team. I said I don't want to know that stuff. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, how, old are, <laughs> how old are the kids? How old are the kids? <laughs> These are kids that are going to be seniors in high school. Oh, oh good. Okay. Top. All right. Yeah. All right. So that could actually be beneficial Eddie. in some in some capacity. But we, you don't care. We Eddie's him. old school. Old school Eddie in the house. Uh, coach, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I I took the uh, the. Uh, my my free time. I Shut t- up! I, t- time. <laughs> I put these numbers on paper, uh, Coach. Would you like to uh, see Stick that? it up your ass! Okay, I'm out of here. See ya. <laughs> uh, uh, coach, my mathematical deductions have uh, uh, Joey B with a 912 OPS. Get out of here! <laughs> that guy sounds tightly wound, Eddie. God forbid you miss a sign from him. You can do a thousand push-ups on the field. Ed, my uh, son Lucas, you know, he's only played twice, and you know, but there's two times. Go I've back to a- soccer. Okay, sorry. <laughs> he actually is a really I, good I, kicker. I, I, Maybe I'm going to play football. Oh my god, that hurt. What's that? That's it. He is actually a good kicker. Maybe he'll play football. <laughs> yes, yes. Huff, you enthused about last night, Huffy? Well, I don't know if you saw, but I did retweet after uh, I saw Huffy's, the. Uh, he, this guy's like the wind. Dude, you are the worst. He's like the wind. What are you talking you're about? You're the Mets worst. Mets lose. Met it's fan. over. Mets not, win. I'm World the, Series. Dude, I'm you're the, tweeting that that Scherzer. Well, he, should they take him out? It's yes. in the fifth inning. Because you want to know why? I want to take a litmus test of our of the Mets fans to see where they trust him. Mm. And did so, you say a lipness? L- test? L- lipness. Lip- lipness? It's L I T. <laughs> Wait, limpness or lip- <laughs> no, lip- not, lipness? No, not limpness. It's L I T. Limpness. There's a T in there. There's buddy. no P. There's no yeah. P. There's a T. Lipness. 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 <laughs> oh, gee. Like Jason Kipness? <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, God. Whatever test I took yesterday mm-hmm. on Twitter, mm-hmm. I took a poll. I'm guessing that you failed, but keep going. <laughs> uh, the point is, is that I wanted to see what the fan base was thinking because honestly, Scherzer hasn't gone deep into no, no, games. You're right, you're so right. I wanted to see. Like, what after, were they saying? I saw that you tweeted that. What were the responses? The percentages were were gradually going down, but it was like 90 per, actually it was 85 going into the 5th, 88 going to the 6th, it was 90 going to the 7th, and then going to the 8th it was like back to like 80 something and then when it came to I was like ninth inning, do you want him to come in the game? It went to 79%. Ooh. So it, right. it dipped a little, a little bit. Yeah. Fell down that pole, huh? But right. listen, whatever. I just want to cuz the reality is that when the shoes fell off, I wanted to see if anybody was like, "Oh, I made a mistake." Mm. I think you mean when the wheels fell off. The not, shoes. Not shoes. No, the shoes can fall off sometimes. <laughs> oh oh boy. You ever get hit by a car you and the shoes go flying off? You. you mess up like these these sayings, these expressions. No, I know. Awesome. The here's the thing is, yeah. I use my 
own. I make up my oh. own. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm original. Well, well, he's very original. I'll go with that. All right. <laughs> you're creating, well, I don't know what I'm saying. You're creating words as well. 877-337-6666. All right, Mets fans. Enjoy it, no doubt. But I don't think it's going to lead anywhere huge. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's They have not. The Mets. Uh, the Mets have not earned the right after one <laughs> after one win to just sit here and say that here we go. You know, I, I need to see seven, eight, nine, ten days of crisp, solid, two-way, really three-way, including base running baseball.